Hey, welcome in everybody to this edition of Lunch Wagon. I'm, of course, Joe Borick here, joined by Andrew Santangelo. As we are on the True Philadelphia Sportscast and Sports Fanatic News YouTube page, please like, comment, and subscribe on both pages, everybody. We appreciate it. Uh, Andrew, how are you doing today for the 25-20? Uh, to 20, uh, Wasn't the prettiest ways to win, kind of Phillies-esque ways to win, but we found a way. Uh, uh, how are you feeling after that win yesterday? We won. We finally get to sit here and talk about a win. It's Victory Monday. It wasn't a gloomy Monday. It was a Victory Monday. I was able to wear and uh, wear my Eagle stuff via victory uh, finally, uh, not just after a loss. Uh, but I'm happy. As you said, I mean, again, it was a battle, that's for sure. We'll get into the goods and bads, but it was a battle and uh, the, uh, a very good win and a momentum-carrying win as well. So very happy. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a battling type game. Um, I think uh, we really helped um, by getting more pressure yesterday as well because uh, Mullins has been fairly good as a backup in his career. He didn't get the wins the year he came in for Garoppolo. And then this year, he, of course, pulled out a win last week prior to um, the loss this week against us. So he's been pretty good at um, just taking what's given to him as a backup, and we were able to stifle him uh, yesterday. Uh, he gave up two interceptions, of course, got sacked four times. Um, what was the issue yesterday was how conservative we started playing when C.J. Beathard came in, and I was about to, like Seth Joyner said, go through my television to yell at <laughs> to yell at Jim Schwartz to be more aggressive again because you're just letting C.J. Beathard throw dimes over the center of the field to wide open wide receiver. <laughs> but uh, we definitely stifled Nick Mullins well. And then, so my question is, how do you think we played against him? And my second part of that question would be, why do you think we got so conservative against C.J. Beathard? Yeah, to start off, I thought the defense was excellent uh, against Mullins. I mean, you look at the numbers, yeah, he throws for 200 yards and 18 or 26, which doesn't seem all. You might read that and say, oh, that's not that good for the defense. But I think a big thing here is, I mean, we, we said it last week after our recap, and uh, when I mean, you heard it all over, it probably says this defense needed to find a way to help the offense out and create turnovers. And what did they do? They not only get three turnovers, but they also um, they also scored on one of those. They had a touchdown, which uh, showed to be uh, pretty big. As you only yeah, win by yeah, five Alex points. Singleton, yeah, yeah Alex got Singleton. subbed in for one play and he got a pick six. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, it stinks losing some of those guys. I mean. Well, we can get into those guys, and, and since we're talking about the defense, let me just say this. A lot of people, I mean, including us, we've been on Howie a little bit in, in terms of the way he's drafted, uh, and I think you you got to give credit when where credit's due at times, and th- this wasn't one of those Clentac moves where, you know, you just sign one of those guys to make it look like you did something, and you, you trade for uh, a Hembre or a Workman where it looks like you did something, but in reality, you, you get someone you already have basically on the roster. A shout out to his trade there for Darius Slay. That was a big time move. Uh, he's clearly making a difference for the secondary. Uh, he's one of the best corners we've had in a very long time, and, and he's making a huge difference. So uh, you got to give credit where credit's due. Big, big shout out to that trade. Uh, guys that stepped up though. And now it stinks because he's down. But before he went down, don't get me wrong, linebackers obviously an issue there, especially in the passing game. But I thought our linebackers covering the run were actually pretty solid. Uh, Shout out to TJ Edwards. I thought he played a tremendous game before he had to leave early. I thought uh, Nate Gary stepped up at different times. Um, Five tackles, three assisted as well Uh, in the run game. Don't get me wrong. You got to do – and I know George Kittle is one of the best, so you can't – rip on him too much but we've seen it in the past before when they struggle in that tight end passing game and, and they definitely struggle at times here but uh and, and i think peterson said it you, you, they mentioned it b- before the game in a practice they went through they really emphasized the next man up mentality again here because one you see what happened around the league uh with the, the cancel or the, the cancellation of the, the steelers titans cam newton got it and they, they kind of emphasize you don't know what's going to happen and here you kind of go back into that heat you, you get certain situations where you might need someone to step up. My tie filled in for Peters, which we'll get into when we cover the offense. But here, you were so desperate for a move. You had to move Jalen Mills back to corner, and you had Kevon Wallace make his— You mean Mulata, right? You mean Mulata, right? I think you said Vitae. 
Uh, uh, that's a lot. I thought it did. not here anymore. Yeah, I, I thought I heard Vita, but I, I uh, I'll go back and listen. But sorry, sorry, listeners, <laughs> that's the wrong name. Uh, I, meant, I meant, uh, I meant, yeah, as Joe said. Um, but no, yeah, so you move Mills back to corner for this game and have Wallace make his start or first career uh, start there. Um, I think I thought he played well for the most part. Mills, I mean, we were on him before at the corner, but I thought overall he played very solid. And this goes to what we've said before. Mills was never a true one cornerback, which we had him playing a lot. When you have a one, you move him to a more traditional spot in the 2-3, you'll see him step up and play better. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say keep him there because I thought he was playing well at safety as well. But you're able to make that switch. Uh, Josh Sweat, he stepped up big time here. Uh, a guy we've been – Everyone was high on it, and now I think you're really starting to see him fully healthy from that injury from college we saw last year. And now you're seeing that movement this year. I thought he's looked better. And I think, and this is good, and hopefully we get a preview in this week if our schedules allow out, but, and we'll get into this. But I thought a big time here on the defense was the defensive line. We saw him dominate Cincinnati last week. Yeah, they didn't get the eight sacks, but they dominated another week. That they rush the quarterback throw. They allow him to rush. That's how you get some of those interceptions. So a big thing is that defensive line. And we really saw those players. And, and Barnett played a good game. Sweat played a good game. Um, I thought Fletcher played another good game uh, after last week. He's starting to improve after, I don't know what made him struggle. But we saw his struggles in the past. And then you're uh, uh, Malik Jackson. I know he was hurt last year, but you saw it. And then... Again, these guys in the middle don't always provide it stat-wise, but you saw the Javon Hargrave, uh, why you signed him this offseason. You you really saw that and stuff. And, and I thought this was a pretty good defensive game. And sorry, la- last thing on the defense to answer your second part on what, what happened on the uh, quarterback switch there. I, I will defend Jim Schwartz because a lot of people don't like him overall, but I think he calls a, a, a fairly solid game for the most part until one thing, protecting a lead. For whatever reason, it's whenever he switches to that prevent defense. I don't know what it will take for him to learn on not to use it. You saw it when we blew that Titans game. I don't remember every game we blew last year. But then this game, uh, same thing. You get the interception from, as you mentioned, uh, Alex Singleton. He gets the interception. You go up by 11 with, what was it, like 5.15 left? You should have that game locked up. But we went into that prevent defense. They bring in the third-string quarterback, and it's just... 10-yard pass after 10-yard pass after whatever next 10-yard pass. And all of a sudden, 49ers score, and you got to give them the ball back and they have a chance to win the game. And it was the same thing. You stay in the prevent defense. Little dunk and dive. There you go, 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards. And then when they got to the 27, you realized, oh, we need to tighten this up. You tighten it up and you stop them. Like, when, when he keeps it to his simple game plan, it's so much better. I don't know why he switches to that because it clearly doesn't work. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, that's a lot to um, go off of uh, there. I think I let you talk for about six minutes. Yeah, uh, you let me go on there for a while. We, we, I'm used to one of us like interjecting to kind of break it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I, I agree. I don't think you should go into a fallback defense, but... I think the degree of one of the things you said of Mills potentially staying at corner is how Wallace, who looked all right in his first game, he made two tackles, how he continues to look at safety as a rookie depends how Mills can stay at corner. If he continues to look all right at safety, like he can just keep developing in the process of playing, then you probably can just run with that. If that doesn't become or remain the case, then you can't really run with that. Um, it kind of depends. And then I also think Burnett, who you brought up, had a very solid game. He he supplied the rush more, and he does. He's playing. Um, we didn't pick up his option, so he's basically playing to either keep his job here or showcase for other NFL teams so he doesn't just kind of end up bouncing around or – being a guy that's forgotten about, like we've seen many guys that were high draft picks becoming free agents before uh, because they weren't able to fully step up until they finally get a chance somewhere else. He wants to be a guy that people always know they can at least count on in some type of and he showed that in this game. No, no, absolutely agree. I forgot I forgot he was kind of playing for a contract there, so that's a good point to bring up. Yeah, no, and then uh, Sweat is another guy 
too. But Singleton, I think, to me, was the most impressive play because the dude never plays. Usually he's a full special teams player. Uh, they put him in because of injury, and then he gets a key pick six. So if I'm picking a play that I think is the uh, most exciting play of the game, um, that would probably be mine because the dude's never really in on defense. Um, and the guy that I didn't necessarily know why we kept on the team over some others for being a full special teams player held his own a little bit on the secondary in Epps. So uh, good for him because he – Really, is just an all-time, like, full-time, excuse me, special team guy. So that was kind of huge um, for him to see that. But uh, we can move on to the uh, offense now where we had our leading receiver making his debut as Travis Fogum out of Old Dominion. Got to love uh, some good old Old Dominion. Um, Fogum was a six-round pick from the Lions. Um I think I kind of alluded to it. I forget if it was pre-show or during the show last week, but if we could get that Greg Ward type guy this year too with all our injuries, that would be so helpful because we still have Craig Ward. So you have the security blanket in Ward himself. If this guy can just be a keep it simple, stupid, just like Ward type receiver that doesn't make anything over blown, he just kind of catches everything thrown to him, almost like a speedy version of Jason Avant, um, where – if Fulgham can just be someone that normally doesn't have drop the ball much and just kind of do what he does and mix in out routes and going down the field some, that could be helpful as a nice pickup because he's also a little bit of size. So um, I think this is a good guy to take a chance on. Uh, what do you think about him and how good of a debut he had? Yeah, I thought he stepped up big time. And uh, I think it shows you – a lot on what how Wentz and others view the rest of the receiving core. Uh, I mean, you you look at it. You, you trust Fulgham on his first game with the team, his first NFL game, to throw that 42-yard bomb? That, I mean, think about how many times have we sat here and s- said, why aren't we trying a deep ball? Why aren't we trying this? You drafted Whiteside. You drafted uh, that. I mean, think about it. Whiteside, Whites, er, Whiteside, yeah, Whiteside has been here for two years now, and he's, I don't know, his exact, exact snap count and all the targets and everything. But think about it. You, you never saw them really do that with Whiteside outside of one or two plays. They did it to this guy's first game. Like, what does that say to everyone else? Like, <laughs> and like, I, I guess it's a tremendous find off another team's practice squad and everything. And here, I'll, I'll say this right now. He didn't really get to play. I don't think he played this week because it was a late week signing. But I really like the other one they signed, Akeem Butler from Iowa State. Look out for him next week if he plays – um, with another week under the under the Eagles belt system here, uh, I like that um, practice squad pickup as well. I know it sounds crazy to be excited about a practice squad guy, but uh, look, if you don't know him, he's got really good size. But uh, in terms of Fulgham, I, I think this says a lot about how they trust him, what they valued in him fast wise, um, or how quickly they valued him. And, and to your mention, if they find that Greg Ward like they did last year, that's gonna be big. I mean, I just. Think about it. Your three leading receivers yesterday. Look at listen to this. Travis Fulgham, Greg Ward, and Richard Rogers. Those were your three what are eating wide receivers. Yeah. Like Granted, that is, Richard Rogers is a way more receiving tight end than anything else. So that's not the most surprising because the dude's kind of always stunk at blocking. No offense to him. That's just never never been his strong suit. He's always been more of the faster um receiving tight end i think wow. that's why we kind of got him as a of all if all else fails third string tight end but yeah i just meant like in him. terms of like think like if you would have told me he would have out like Ertz, like think about it. he had about Ertz. 26 more yards than zach Ertz. like Ertz only goes for nine yards yesterday and if you would if you would have told me before the game zach Ertz finishes the game with nine yards miles sanders finishes the game with 46 rushing yards I would have thought we would have lost that game. Like, knowing well, everything else we had. Like, that, that that's how much this team, and, and credit to them, they stepped up. I mean, they could say and deny that they don't hear what we, whatever all the fans are saying. They hear that. Deep down, they hear a lot of it. I mean, they're on Twitter. You can't avoid it when you go on Twitter. Like, they're reading that throughout the week. They, they wanted to prove a point, not only that they're still alive and, and everything. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we're winning the Super Bowl now. We're Super Bowl contenders. Obviously, we need to see a lot more before that. But I was just happy to see the fight, the drive, the desire that this team showed. And, and that started with Fulgram. I mean, he realized 
Jeffrey's out, Jackson's out, Rager's out, etc. I need so I got to be the guy, and, and that again, I'm not comparing. I'm not saying Super Bowl here we come, but I'm saying comparing it to that year, and, and they truly dove into and believed in the next man up mentality that I think they kind of lacked the last few years when they needed the next man up. He stepped up, and and he really. I don't know what they did to drive into him compared to somebody else, but he really took on that role and wanted to prove something. Yeah, no, that was huge. Um, yeah, I think, think any time you have a guy, especially a ladder round pick, step up in his debut like that, that's just a fun story too because you never expect a, a six-round pick to come in and just really be a huge stapling point to why you uh, won a game. I think Sanders, yeah, he wasn't as um, – lethal in the running game as usual he did still have over um 70 total yards though because he had 30 receiving yards so he got a solid overall game i mean the only guy that really struggled um receiving or running wise was that killian's kid out of central florida that we have that we brought up this week he had negative 12 rushing yards so that's unfortunate did you see, did uh, you see they other- waved did you see they waved him today Oh, did they? Yeah, it was unbelievable. I was like, man, you gave him one game? You gave him one game and that was it? Yeah. Well, I guess they figured they just kind of had to have him in for a game. I don't know. Maybe they just wanted another rusher, and then they're like, eh, we don't need him. But Wentz, of course, helped because he actually had 37 rushing yards and moved around a little bit more, which is when he's most effective. I don't know what you think about that. The problem is it also is when he's most injury-prone. So you kind of have to balance the two evils because we have seen that at least as of now, he's not the most effective when he just drops back and shoots it. He's a lot more effective when he rolls out of the pocket, runs RPOs and does all that, but that does set him up more for injuries. So what would your solution be? Or would you just say, I think you have to run him out of the pocket, run RPOs, and do throws on the run because that's when he's the most effective. Yeah, and I, I think I mentioned my mentions last week. Uh, I think uh, you have to. And unfortunately, like you said, it's more dangerous. It puts him in tough spots. But listen, he's at his best, and it's quite clear he's at his best compared to when you sit him in the pocket, you force him to, to make a decision while he's standing there in the pocket, having everyone collapse on him. He's at his best when he has the freedom to, to, to do the read option, to do the RPO, to, to make the decision to run or whatnot, or to just scramble out of the pocket. He likes creating that own play. I know it's a little more dangerous, and but, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong and, and say so if you disagree, but I thought these last two weeks – and, yes, he still missed a couple throws here and there. But decision-wise, I thought this was at his best the last two weeks. His interception, I don't necessarily agree with that decision. His arm got hit and the ball got tipped and the guy made a diving interception. I don't disagree with that decision. I thought his decision, though, maybe outside of one throw, but for the most part, I thought his decision was on point. Again, he might have missed a couple throws accuracy, but just because you miss accuracy doesn't mean it was a bad decision. So I think his decision-making, his last two weeks, when he's able to scramble, he has more time, he sees the field is better than when you let him sit in there. And I think, and I don't know what's going through his head, but when he scrambles and makes his own decision, I think he, he does throw the ball away a lot more than when he sits there trying to make a read. And he kind of, I think he almost gets too envisioned in making that read, which then allows him to get knocked down, fumble, or whatever. So, again, it's more dangerous, but I think with him having the freedom, it's not, it's not like an RG three when he's running every play. Like I think he's able to make the good, uh, a smart decision. And I think the big thing is if they continue to allow, which I want to see them continue to allow, because again he's at his best. He needs to know when to slide is the big thing. And obviously, if you die for point. if you die for a touchdown, that's one thing. When he got his ACL, you can't fault him for trying to get a touchdown. But the thing is, I mean, we've seen it before where he stays up and he takes a big hit on a nine-yard run. When If he slides, he'd get eight yards instead. You need to know when it's time to slide. Where Okay, eight yards here, a second and two is okay. I don't need a second and one. Like, you got you to gotta know when to slide. That if And hopefully they continue, but he's got to know when to slide. No, I completely agree with that. I've always thought that was a big issue with Carson, knowing exactly when to get down because who huh? – put himself up for unnecessary uh, hits at times, which makes uh, no sense where um, there was a funny play in the Chiefs game 
Um, this will be coming out on Tuesday, but the Monday night game where Mahomes was about to step out of bounds, he's like, ah, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you could hear through the mic because he was literally about to step out of bounds as he got hit. Um, so, <laughs> like, there's plays that Wentz has to do that and go towards out of bounds, except for don't get hit by the person, actually go out of bounds. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think that is spot on. I think he overthinks it sometimes when he stays in the pocket. I think what Doug hinted at the first couple weeks, too, is he kind of over audible sometimes, too, when you tell him to just stay in the pocket because he's overthinking the um, issues on the offensive line, I think, when you tell him to just kind of stay more stationary. Mm -hmm. So he over audibles the play. And when you have a bunch of new personnel, you can't really over audible because they don't even fully know the playbook that well as it is. Yeah. So if you're changing it up all the time, that's not really going to work. So I think that's a good point. I think when he moves around, he's a lot more effective. But uh, we're hitting our 20 some minute mark. Uh, appreciate everyone for listening. I'll turn it over to Andrew for uh, his final point and a uh, way you can uh, follow him at. Yeah, well, last final thought. I won't go too long, but again, I think um, a big question mark was the offensive line, and I thought they stepped up for the most part yesterday. Jordan Matai for uh, Jason Peters there, I thought he did a a phenomenal job. First career start, um, a lot of uh, skeptical. There were a lot of people being skeptical on the way he was going to come in and uh, do it. One, switching sports, too. We all heard about the question marks about practice and, and everything. But outside that one full start, and you texted me, I forget who it was, and you can probably say it if you remember who tweeted it. But, hey, listen, that was a bad full start, but you're having a solid game. You need to put a past you and continue because the team needs you. And I, I think he did just that. Maybe there was one other play that I can't think of. But outside that full start, which was pretty notable because he had killed a drive, I thought he stepped up big time for the Eagles on that left side and uh, fill in that spot for Dillard and Peters there. So that's my final thought. You can follow me at AJ underscore Santangelo um, on Twitter and any other podcast I do as well, uh, or on my Twitter as well. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. He did have a very good game. And uh, my final thought is just congratulations to the rookie Fulgham for having a great game at his debut. And then also Greg Ward just continues to be a nice security blanket whenever you need a completion. He had four catches for 38 again, a solid uh, game. And Richard Rogers seems to have been a solid pickup as a receiving tight end. So uh, that that seems good as well for us since we need all the receiving capable guys we can have right now. But uh, everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant week. It uh, should be a much better week this week since we're coming off of an Eagles win at 25-20 to 20 over the 49ers. And we, of course, next week are going to be going into the Steel City <clears throat> to play Pittsburgh. So, um We'll preview that hopefully sometime later this week. For Andrew, I'm Joe. You can follow me at JJ Boric, B O R E K 26 on Twitter. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. This is Wentz Wagon. Peace out, everybody. Go Eagles.